Today I'm going to share with you out of Matthew chapter 20. For those of you here in the first sermon, the first service, yes, I'm, I'm this right, I'm doing a different one. Matthew chapter 20, beginning in verse 29 through 34. Um, uh, I title this, Jesus is Passing By Today. Um, and I was reading through this passage in my daily Bible reading as we try to read through and make sure that I just don't check it off, but really understand what God is saying and applying it to my life. And, and, uh, and I felt like uh, when I came to this passage that it was a not only something that encouraged me, but I hope it encourages you as brothers and sisters in Christ and those who are seekers, those who are wondering, uh, is Jesus wanting me to be his follower also? So maybe today that might happen. But as I, if you'll follow with me in Matthew chapter 20, uh, I will read verses 29 through verse 34. Now as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him, and that being Jesus. Behold, two blind men sitting by the road, when they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, Son of David. Then the multitude warned them that they should be quiet, but they cried out all the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, Son of David. So Jesus stood still and called them and said, What do you want me to do for you? Then they said to him, Lord, that our eyes might be opened. So Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I know it's true. Not only do, have you conserved your word, and it's been here since it was written, but also you have written it in our hearts and Father, it continues to show that we are followers of you. It reminds us of the words of Christ and how we should live. Thank you for your word. Lord, I pray today that your word would go out and not return void. We thank you that is powerful. And I pray for each one here today that they would be encouraged. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I, I, as I read this passage, and you probably have felt the same thing, I thought how neat it would be to actually be there, to be on the side of the road or walking beside Jesus or, or to see Him coming, to actually physically to be able to see Him. But not only to see Him, but to see Him work, to see Him uh, have compassion and heal someone. And I'm sure... Uh, I, uh, some of you may have had that same thought, and so it struck me that there's much more here in this message about Jesus. Obviously, when you see it, you see, wow, he has healing power. Look what he did. He could heal anyone of anything at any time in any place, and I believe this is the same today. He can heal anyone of anything. Nothing's too difficult for him. He can physically heal people if he so wishes. But I think there's something more here than just the physical healing. Uh, we get to know more about Jesus when we're in his word. And I think in this passage, we see more about the character of Christ than just a healing uh, Lord and Savior. And that's great. And we do praise him that he can do those things. And we have seen him heal people here in, in our midst, uh, in our lifetime also. And maybe, and there's times I've been uh, at the uh, CC unit at uh, NAMSI when they call me and say, we have someone here who needs help, needs someone to pray for them. And I've seen people be able to walk out of that intensive care unit later because I believe the Lord has healed them. And I've seen some that went on to heaven from that point too. So we know God is capable through Jesus Christ, but there's more about His character here. And so I thought to myself as I read this passage, what if Jesus passed by today? What would it be like if you knew He's here? And I believe that he is here today. 
What would we do if we knew Jesus was passing by today? Would we be excited? Would we be stretching our necks to see Him? What would we do, especially if we had a need? What do you want Jesus to do for you today? And you thought, well, I just wanted to come and hear some good singing. I want to come and hear someone preach. I want to come and see my friends. I want to feel uplifted. But what if He was here today? What if He ministered to your need today? Whatever that need is, I just want to let you know He's passing by today. I have three points that I want to share with you today if Jesus is passing by today. Number one, Jesus is passing by. Now I know in the scripture we see this in verses 29 through 31. Jesus is physically passing by. He's on his way to Jerusalem. This is his last trip through Jericho. He's going to Jerusalem because he knows that's the Father's will. He's not going to come by that way again, physically. So his mind is forward to Jerusalem. Jericho is about 15 miles away from Jerusalem. So as he's walking, people are traveling to go to the Passover. So a large crowd is there. There are a large crowd that's passing by, and there's a large crowd that heard Jesus was coming by in their city. So a large crowd, crowd was watching Jesus. There were two men, as you see here, that had a need. And then in Mark chapter 10, verse 46, it names one of them is Bartimaeus. But there were two men that were physically blind. And so I want you to know out of this, if Jesus is passing by, it should be our habit to be where Jesus is passing by. If you know Jesus is working, we should be ready to watch Him pass by. Oh, to be able to see Jesus move in someone's heart. To see someone who's calling out for help and Jesus helps them. So it should be our habit to be where Jesus is passing by. Now, how can we do that? We can't go to Jericho, but we can see that he loved to go by and see people. Now, these two men, it was their habit to watch or to listen when people went by. You see, they had no way of making money, and all they could do was ask for mercy. They asked for someone to help them. So maybe when they heard a large crowd was going by, They were at the right place at the right time. And I'm sure when everyone knew the runner would come in and say, Jesus is coming. He's coming through. If you want to see Jesus, stand outside. You'll see him go by. So I'm sure they had as their usual habit to sit there, but to make sure they were close enough so they could hear that Jesus is passing by. It was a good thing that they were out that day that Jesus passed by. I asked, what if Jesus passed by Underwood today? What a great thing that you're here today, just in case Jesus passes by. So, it should be our habit to be in church because Jesus passes by His church. Now, we know we have the Holy Spirit, that He is dwelling in us, that Jesus physically is at the throne beside God the Father, and He's making intercession for us. But just what if? Where would He go by? Well, I believe Jesus would pass by where His children are worshiping Him. You want to know what gets Jesus' attention? It's when His children want to praise His name. When his children want to come and give him honor and to learn from him 
and to hear what he has to say through song and through sermon and through your Bible studies and your time with each other as the Holy Spirit is moving among you. This is a likely place for Jesus to pass by. Now, he can pass by anywhere he wants. You know that, don't you? He can pass by your classroom at school. He could pass by your neighborhood. He could pass by the hospital. But I would surely say he would pass by his church. I believe it pleases the Lord when he hears you sing. When you make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I believe it pleases him when you come and say, maybe there's a word for me today. Jesus will pass by. There's another good reason for being at church today, right? It would be tough to be sitting in your recliner and knowing that Jesus passed by your church today. And you're here today, so you say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. And we know there's others that should be here. And there's some that were hindered for health reasons and other things. But just remind your friends and your neighbors, you should have been at church today as Jesus passes by His church. Unless they're spiritually dead. Another place Jesus normally will pass by is where His children are praying. When you pray, Jesus hears your prayers. That's a biblical promise. You know that, don't you? Jesus hears when you pray. And as we learn about the character of Jesus, is not just to come and to live and show a perfect life and die on the cross and rise from the dead. Amen, He did that. But He wants you to know more about Him. It's not just to receive Him as Lord and then you don't ever hear from Him. When you pray to Jesus, you have communion with Him. He comes and speaks to us in prayer. Now we will have our things that we want Jesus to do for us. But you see, He just wants to come and spend time with you, brothers and sisters in Christ. He'll pass by when you pray. And you think no one else knows. And no one hears my prayers. No one knows what I'm going through. Jesus knows. Because He comes to hear you pray. And even as you pray, even today, if you'd say, Jesus, if you're for real and you're, you're wanting to hear me pray, would you speak to me today? I believe He will speak to you today if you're sincere. He passes by where His children pray. So call out to Him like the blind men and He will hear your prayers. Another place Jesus will pass by is where His children are suffering. Now there's different ways of suffering, but he's passing by today. Sometimes the suffering is pain. I don't feel good today. My foot's hurting, so maybe I should stay at home. Jesus knows that you're suffering with that problem. Maybe I'll feel better when I go to church. You know, my father knew me well enough when I was a kid. I'd say, Dad, I feel sick. I don't know if I can go to church today. He said, well, let's just pray about it and let's just go on and let Jesus help you feel better when you get there. My dad knew Jesus knows when his children are suffering. If you're not feeling good today, Jesus knows that. Sometimes we suffer because we share the gospel. Sometimes we suffer because people laugh at us and say, you're not one of those fanatics, are you? Sometimes we suffer because we have a wayward child that don't want to hear about the gospel. So mom, dad, don't say anything. I just want to come by and visit. I just want to see if you have any money. Sometimes we suffer because our kids won't talk to us. Or our parents won't talk to us. 
There's suffering going on. And when his children are suffering, you think that I would be upset if my children were suffering? Absolutely. And I'm not a heavenly father. Jesus passes by when his children are suffering. Whatever you're going through, please know, brothers and sisters, Jesus is passing by. He knows what you're going through. You're not all alone. He is with you. He passes by. Call out to Him to have mercy. Lastly, Jesus regularly passes by when people need to be saved. When people are at a dead end in their life, I don't know how I got in this road. I don't know how I got in this fix. But I need out. Jesus is passing by you today. He knows what you're facing. Whether it be for salvation. I've tried this. I've tried that. Jesus is saying, when are you going to come follow me? Because he passes by and listens for you to call out for mercy. He's passing by. Today, is there anyone who needs to be saved today? Is there anyone calling out for mercy because they find none at home? They find no mercy in their place of work. Jesus is passing by today to give you mercy. Secondly, not only is Jesus passing by, But I would like to say that Jesus stands still when you call. And He calls for you. If you look in this passage, these people were blind. They physically could not get up and go to Jesus. They could hear Him, but they could not see Him. They needed help. And so when they heard that Jesus was passing by, They called Him Lord, Son of David, which are messianic names. They knew who Jesus was. They knew He was the Son of God. They knew He was the Messiah, the promised one that could offer eternal life. But they had to call out, have mercy. But when they called out, notice what it said in Scripture. Jesus is on His way to the cross. He's on His way to give us life. His very important walk here, as he's going, his face was toward Jerusalem. But when he heard someone calling out for mercy, the Bible tells us he stopped and stood still. Who could be more important than Jesus on the way to Jerusalem, to the cross? He showed those who call out to mercy, I will stop. And listen to your call. You're never too far away from Jesus. that He will not hear you call out for mercy and stop. Here we see the compassion of Jesus Christ for those who call out for mercy. So you think that, I've gone too far. I've done too many things as... Beyond me being saved. Jesus don't have time for me. He's busy. He's doing all these other things. Answering prayers. He's going to be at church and all these things. Listen, in Scripture it is saying He heard them call for mercy. Jesus is the same as He was in this Scripture right here. He hears today when you call for mercy. You know, mercy is the word that means that I don't get what I deserve. I want mercy because I know I'm a sinner and I don't deserve for Jesus to hear me. I want mercy because I need forgiveness for my sins because I can't clean myself. I can't make myself good. I need someone to have mercy on me and not give me what I deserve. I need Jesus to hear me today. Brothers and sisters, He stops when you call out to Him for mercy. Because you see, we in our 
Christian lives, we feel like we have to be perfect. We have to live the perfect life. And then if we do everything and mark it off and do everything that I'm supposed to do, then Jesus will hear us. That's not what he did in Scripture. Jesus is listening for his children when they get into sin and they want out. They want to get things right. He hears when you call for mercy. Brothers and sisters, be encouraged. He had stopped anything he needed to do in order to hear you. You are important to him. He will stop and listen. And not only to those who know him, those who are his children, but those who don't know him. Those who say, well, I've done this, I've done that. Jesus, if you're for real, Please have mercy on me. He stops and hears your prayer. Now notice that Jesus, it says he stood still. So Jesus wanted to let them know if they want to have mercy, they must come to him to get mercy. See, sometimes we make calls and we call out to Jesus to help us, but we want Jesus to come over here and help us. Jesus, i got a problem over here. You see all this stuff going on? I don't want it to happen. Can you come over here and fix this? He goes, first, you come to me. If you want mercy, you come to me. I'm the one who gives mercy. You see, Jesus is not so involved about trying to fix all your problems. Sure, he cares about you, but the greatest thing is for him is he wants you to come to him. You see, he wants fellowship with you, brother and sisters. So when you say, but, but, but I want this to be fixed, he goes, first things is our relationship with you and me. I want you to come to me. So the blind men heard and they called out and then people came and told him listen he's standing there he's calling out to you he says for you to come and so man they jumped up and someone had to help them they couldn't see but they were ready to go I'm going to go see Jesus is calling my name Jesus he's he hears me he's waiting for me so brothers and sisters if you're living in sin why are you just sitting when you call out to mercy, you must come to Him. Say, Jesus, here I am. I need your mercy. And these blind men came to Him and sought Him. And Jesus wanted to have fellowship with Him. So Jesus calls for you. How did He hear a cry for mercy? It's because he knows all things. What would be a cry of mercy today? Is it sickness? Is it something that's really hurting inside? Physically? Jesus, do you hear me? I'm sick. I want to be made well. He says, come to me. I will help. What else would be a call of mercy? Maybe it's a fear of death. Maybe you have reached the point where you have outlived your own mother and father. They, I remember when my dad passed away. He was uh, 81. And I think, is that when I'm going to pass away? It could be just the next day. I don't know. But there's a fear of death. And no, can I live longer? Some of you today are dealing with that fear. Call out for mercy and come to Him. He will help you. He hears your call. And He calls for you to come to Him. He wants you to be closer to Him first before He fixes things. So He calls us to himself. That's why we need to know who he is. We want to know how awesome he is and how loving he is, how compassionate he is. 
If it is His will, absolutely He will do it. You say, well, how do you know that? Well, because I know if it's in His will, He makes all things new. He does all things well. If it's His will to heal you, He will do that. If it's His will for you to find someone that you might marry in the future, He will do that. If there's a situation at home, and if it's His will, He will fix that. That's who He is. He does those things. We just have to trust and be in His will. Don't be afraid to call to Him. He will call to us to draw closer to Him. Lastly, not only do we see that He's passing by, but He stands still when you call and calls you to Himself. Thirdly, Jesus has compassion for you and will heal. Now you see in these verses here that He physically healed them. He had compassion. He saw their great need. They said, uh, when He asked, what do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, that our eyes might be open." So He had compassion and He touched their eyes. And immediately they could see. Wow, what power. That's what Jesus can do. But He can also have compassion for you and for me. And heal us. He showed mercy. They asked for mercy. And he gave mercy. Brothers and sisters. Ask for mercy. He gives it abundantly. And he gives grace. He gave them what they needed. And they were able to see when he touched them. Jesus can do awesome things for us too. He can fix relationships. He can help heal our bodies. He can help us deal with anxiety and loneliness. He can help us in dealing with other things that cause us to have great fear. He can fix our bodies, and heal us physically. But in all those things, that can make us joyful, but it cannot save us. You see, we must know Him as Lord and Savior and follow Him. So if we already know Him as the Lord, the healing should cause us to follow Him closer. Whatever He does when He shows mercy should draw us closer to Him. I've heard time and time again of people who have issues, whether physically or mentally or dealing with sin, that when they drew closer to Him, He took care of them. There's joy, there's sweet fellowship when we go to Christ when He calls us. Also, the healing may come when we see Him face to face. I remember when I got the word that my mother had Alzheimer's. We kind of knew something was going on. She couldn't remember how to play certain card games while we were playing them. There were times that she would forget and leave something on the eye. And when she was cooking, I remember the day she couldn't remember to do lemon ice box pie. My favorite. And I knew that she's going to be going home soon. Sure, I wanted Jesus to fix it. Fix my mother. But as time went on, as I continued to pray, I realized that he was taking care of my mother. He was with her, even when she couldn't remember. <laughs> One time he gave me a time, I, I used to come and sing some songs about heaven to mother when I was able to be home from Ukraine for a visit. And uh, I prayed, I said, Lord, if it be your will, let me go home, see my mother, and let her rem remember me, who I am. 
and let me read scripture to her and that she'd remember. And that was a big ask. But I wanted mercy. And so I told my Ukrainian friend, I told him, I said, don't tell anybody. I'm afraid I'll be a false prophet if I say this is going to happen. But I really think Jesus has answered my prayer and it's going to happen. That I'm going to get to go home and see my mother and she's going to know who I am and I'm going to be able to read scripture to her and she's going to understand. And so he said, okay, I'll, I'll pray for you and I won't tell anybody. I went home and I was... You know, I would sing when we all get to heaven and other things. And I, I remember uh, coming in and said, Mama, I'm here to sing a song to you. And of course, at that time, she couldn't talk very much at all. And I said, so you want me to get the hymnal? You want, want me to sing? She says, no. <laughs> I thought, well, you know, maybe I need to practice a little bit more. I said, well, what are we going to do, Mama, today? What are we going to do? She said, Psalms. Call out to mercy. Come to him. So I got her little red Bible. Read Psalm 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. She said, Amen. I said, Mama, you know who I am? Tim. Mama, you going to heaven soon? Yes. Thank you, Mama, for telling me about Jesus. She just nodded her head. I said, Mama, there are going to be people in Ukraine now because you let me go. <laughs> you supported me. And I said, Mama, I'll see you soon. And she said, yes. And then after that, she looked off in a distant look. And I knew my prayer was answered. He did. I would love for him to heal her. I'd love for that to work out. That was not God's will. God's will was to take mama to heaven. But what I learned, when you call out to mercy and call out to him, he will hear your prayer. And if it is in his will, he will do what you ask. And whether he did what I asked or not, I remember praying, heal her so she would remember. I knew he was with her. He stayed with her until she went to heaven. He answered my prayer. And listen, I'm just a country boy out in Lawrence County, Alabama. And if God can do that for me, he can surely do that for people who live in Lauderdale County, Cloverdale, big city, has a Walmart. He can do that for you today, brother and sister. He can hear you. He's passing by today. Be aware that Jesus is close by. He will stand and listen to you as you call out for mercy. He will call you to himself. And he always gives you what you need. That's a characteristic of him. He never breaks a promise. He always gives you what you need. There's an old song. Some of you are a lot younger. You probably don't remember this song. I remember your grandparents singing it. It says, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others you are calling, do not pass me by. That is what Jesus hears. That's a call for mercy. Maybe you just need to get right with Him. 
and say, Jesus, I'm sorry I've been asking you to fix things and fix things. And really all you wanted is relationship with me. I need mercy. Can I come spend some time with you? Jesus says, come on. I'm here to help you. Maybe you've never made that decision. Maybe you were looking for something and you just decided to be here today. Well, I'm here to tell you, Jesus is passing by. And he hears your humble cry. Come to him and he will save you. Turn away from your sin and come to him and call out for mercy. He will save you.